This is a C4 section B question, so worth about 18 marks. It's a question on parametrics, and a lot of people find this type of question quite daunting when they look at it. This diagram can look a bit scary, but don't worry about that. We can clearly see it's a parametric equations question because we've got x and y both in terms of this parameter t, where t is going to be taking values between minus root 2 and root 2. So all this means is on this curve, any point on the curve has got a t value and then an x coordinate, which is 2 multiplied by the t value squared, and a y coordinate, which is 4 multiplied by the t value. So we're going to do something considering gradients and tangents, get something with tan theta, and then some other things with angles, possibly double angle formula coming in here, and eventually finding a volume of revolution. In part one, the first thing we need to do is to consider the gradient of the tangent TS. So the gradient of TS is just dy dx evaluated at the point T. So it will be something in terms of T. This should be relatively straightforward to do because we were given what x is in terms of t and what y is in terms of t. So if we differentiate each of these with respect to x, we can combine our answers to get dy dx. So differentiating x with respect to t, we multiply by the power, subtract 1 from the power, we get dx dt is 4t. Similarly for y, if we differentiate with respect to t, we get 4. Then we want dy dx, which is dy dt over dx dt, so we get 4 over 4t, the 4s cancel, giving us 1 over t. So the gradient of ts is 1 over t. We're then asked to show that tan theta is 1 over t, so we need to think why the gradient of ts should be tan theta. This is actually something that always happens when we have a straight line. If we consider the gradient, as being the number of units up per unit across, we could draw a right angle triangle like this with one unit across, then the number of units up would be the gradient, the 1 over t. You can think of the gradient as difference in y over difference in x. So if the difference in x is 1, the difference in y is the gradient. But also, using basic Sokotoa, we've got tan theta is opposite over adjacent, so tan theta is 1 over t over 1, which is 1 over t. In part 2, first we have to find the gradient of the line QP in terms of t. We'll need to be careful that we do get the correct gradient from the diagram. And then hence we're going to show a couple of other things. This word hence means we should be able to use the result of this gradient in order to do the other two parts. So. Finding the gradient of this line, similar to what we just did in part 1, the gradient will be the difference in y divided by the difference in x. This will also be what tan phi is. So the difference in y here is effectively just the y coordinate of q, so it's 4t. Now the difference in x, well the x coordinate at p is 2t squared and the x coordinate at q is 2, so the difference between them is 2t squared minus 2. So this means that tan phi is 4t, difference in y, divided by 2t squared minus 2, difference in x. We can cancel out the 2s, divide the whole numerator and denominator by 2 to get that tan phi, or the gradient of qp, which is after all what we were actually asked for, is 2t over t squared minus 1, and that is in terms of t, which is what was required. Now, hence show this. Well, we've got an expression for tan phi, and if phi is going to be 2 theta, we could try looking at the expression for tan 2 theta using the double angle formula and the fact that we know that tan theta from the previous part of the question is 1 over t. So tan 2 theta will be 2 tan theta over 1 minus tan theta squared. So 2 tan theta, 2 times tan theta, which is 1 over t, over 1 minus tan squared theta, so that's 1 over t all squared. Now whenever you get this kind of quadruple decker fraction, 
The easiest way to avoid having these fractions within a fraction is look for the denominator and multiply the original fraction by that denominator over itself. So we've got a t here or a t squared here. Both go into t squared. So I'm going to multiply by t squared over t squared. So what will happen here? 2t squared over t will end up with just 2t and in the denominator t squared minus t squared over t squared will be t squared minus 1. So we've ended up with an expression for tan 2 theta which looks exactly the same in fact as the expression for tan phi. So theta must be equal to sorry 2 theta must be equal to phi because we've got that tan phi and tan 2 theta give us the exact same result so the phi and the 2 theta must be equal. So moving on we've got this last part the angle TPQ equal to theta. So I would want to draw a diagram here to make sure that I can see the angle required so from T to P to Q it's this angle in here that we're interested in and apparently this is going to be equal to theta. Well, we've got angles that are what you might well have called uh, U angles or interior angles at GCSE. So this angle and this one would have to add up to 180 degrees or working in radians, they add up to pi. So if this one's phi, this one must be pi minus phi. These are called supplementary angles. So we've got that angle, so Q to P to R is pi minus phi. And I'd start by writing that down clearly to make it obvious what I'm doing. So angles on a straight line have a sum of pi, or a sum of 180 degrees if you like, and I'm interested in this line with T and P on it. So the angle we're interested in, TPQ, plus the angle pi minus phi plus theta must add up to pi. So if I write that down, TPQ plus pi minus phi plus theta equals pi. Now I can cancel out the pi's, effectively I'm subtracting pi from both sides. And this phi, we've just said earlier, phi is 2 theta. So if I replace this phi with 2 theta and then collect like terms, we've got angle TPQ minus theta is 0, so angle TPQ is theta. In the third and final part of this question, we're going to find the Cartesian equation, although actually we're just showing that the Cartesian equation is this, so even if we can't find that, we'll be able to do the next part, which is finding the volume of revolution of the curve. We'll make sure that we give the answer as an exact value in terms of a multiple of pi. So, we were told that x was 2t squared. We should be able to rearrange this and substitute in to find y or in fact y squared in terms of x. You could alternatively do this the other way around, swapping x and y, provided that you start with the original parametric equations and finish with the Cartesian. So I'm going to rearrange just by dividing by 2 to get that t squared is x over 2. And I've got y equals 4t, but I can see the expression I'm looking for has a y squared. So if I square both sides, I'll get something with t squared, which I can then substitute for x over 2. So by squaring both sides I've got y squared is 16t squared and then substituting in the t squared is x over 2 that will give me that y squared is 18 sorry 16x over 2 and then the 16 divided by 2 will divide to give me that y squared is 8x. Now I'm not sure how many marks are for the show that when I'm doing this question but because we were given the answer, it's worth showing full, complete working because there'll be no credit for actually getting the answer. It's all about how we get there. Then we're moving on to finding the volume of revolution. We've got a formula for the volume of revolution and we'll need to know what the limits are that we're going to use in that. Well, the original parametric equations were given with t values between minus root 2 and root 2. Now the x-coordinate we can see is 2t squared. So that will take its smallest value when t is 0 and the biggest value that x will take will be when t is root 2 or minus root 2. 
So if I use t is root 2, then x is 2 multiplied by root 2 squared, which is 4. So that means in my expression for the volume, I'm going to use 0 and 4 as my limits. And the formula is that it's pi multiplied by the integral of y squared dx, where y is a function of x. And in fact, we've got that y squared is 8x, so we can substitute that straight in. So we're doing pi multiplied by the integral from 0 to 4 of 8x dx. And some people forget to actually integrate at this stage. It helps if you remember how to show you're working. You should always have four lines. You've got the integral line, then the square brackets line, then the line where you substitute the values, and then your final answer. So here's the line with the integral symbol telling us that we're going to integrate 8x with respect to x. Then when we integrate, we get 8x squared over 2, which is 4x squared, and this goes in the square brackets. Notice the whole thing is still multiplied by pi. I then take another line to show what happens when I substitute in first the 4 and then the 0 and subtract the two terms. So the whole thing multiplied by pi, I've got 4 multiplied by 4 squared minus, well, 4 times 0 squared is just going to be 0. And then finally, that gives me 64 pi cubic units.